Here we go with session five, audio editing hacks for podcasters, easy ways to improve your podcast workflow and get things done fast and efficiently in Adobe Audition. First of all, did you know you can create templates for your podcast so that everything is easy and ready to go each time you create a new episode? And to show you how much Adobe Audition love podcasters, if you click multi-track to start a new multi-track file, uh, let's call it the podcast, they have a wonderful feature here called template, where they give you many different templates, one of which is a podcast template. So I'll click it and show you exactly how it looks. When you go in there, initially you've got your 30 second intro there, the main content, which only seems to be three minutes long. Obviously you can extend that to however long you'd like to go for and a 30 second outro gap there. You'll notice it even creates tracks for you like host, interview, sound effects, music bed, and the master. If we click the master and look over at the effects rack, you can see that it's already put in some EQ and compression. So let's get started. Let's bring some bits into this multi-track session. First of all, I'm going to bring in my podcast intro and drop it in there. Now let's zoom in and look there. Now you see the 30 second intro is just slightly longer. So I'm actually going to drag that marker out a little bit, bring the intro out towards the end and the main content can start there for me. And I'm going to actually rename that marker because it's not my 30 second intro. So click into markers, double click to rename that intro and call it podcast intro or whatever you prefer. Next I'll zoom in and I'm going to move the music bed onto the music bed track. Now you'll notice this music bed only goes on for around 30 seconds. How can I loop it so that it goes on and on and on forever? Well, let me show you. First of all, I'm going to count the beats of the music bed. So as you can hear the beat loops back around around here, let's zoom in right there. And then I'm going to use Command K to split the wave there. I'll zoom out and I'm going to right click that bit that I've separated bounce to new track, selected clips only will bring it into its own track there called bounce one. Now notice when I double click it to go back to the waveform view, it is only those first beats of the music and nothing else. So in essence, the part of the music track that I want to loop. Back into multi-track, I'm going to delete these for the time being. I'm going to right click those beats, loop, and then when I zoom in, and I hover over the end of the wave, you'll notice I get an icon like this, which means I can drag this out forever and ever and ever and have a non-stop music bed going on for the whole podcast, if I like, which could last for, oh gosh, 20 minutes, if you like. And that's all the same beat just going over and over again. Now let's delete that loop and bring back in the original podcast intro, drop it in on the music bed track. By the way, if you want to delete that bounce one track, you no longer need it, right click on the track, Go to track, delete selected track, and it's gone. Now I often like to set up my podcast intro so that it's ready to go every time in Adobe Audition and I can easily see what I need to change. So first of all, I'm gonna drag in myself talking here and I'm gonna drop it in on the host track there, move this out the way. And you'll notice the first bit is just me introducing the podcast. Podcast episode one. There it is. And then I just hit there and command K to split that because that's part of my intro. Now, if I want to color code each wave so I know what it is, just select the wave, go into properties, and you can change the clip color. Now, usually I like to change things that I need to change every time in a podcast to a red color. That's an action color for me there. And then I can move the intro in a little bit and just align it to the end of me introducing the podcast. And I might decide to change the intro music to say a yellow color so I can recognize it. And then, of course, my intro can be dropped towards the end of that, right there on the end of the marker. And when I play it back, this is the intro to the podcast. You'll notice that you can't hear me clearly over the end of the intro, so I'm going to use a trick that I demonstrated earlier and just adjust the volume on the end of that music. This is the intro to the podcast. Now, perhaps you like to move audio around in the multi-track plenty, but sometimes there's audio that you don't want to move, like your podcast intro. You want that to be in the same place every time. Then you can right-click on that audio and click Lock in Time, 
you get a little padlock at the bottom left of the audio and that means no matter what you do now if you right click and try and drag it's not going to move now say for instance you want to move multiple pieces of audio you can simply click like this and select multiple waves and when I try to move the audio everything will move along apart from the intro which is now locked in time Now, what if you have a podcast with multiple guests talking? So say you've got the host here on track one, you've got an interview on track two, and perhaps I'm going to insert two more tracks by going into track, add stereo audio track, and again, track, add stereo audio track. Now I've got four tracks in total. So I've got me speaking there. This is the intro to the podcast. And then I'm going to drag in a lovely lady saying something that I recorded earlier. This really is not my cup of tea. And then I'm going to drag in a chap here on the next track. T. Hello, chap. Lovely day for it. And finally, I'm going to drag in this to the next track. So I've got now four people all speaking on different tracks. Let's have a listen to the final bit. Right. Oh, put a sock in it. Now, perhaps I have multiple guests speaking on different tracks, and I want to add an effect to every single person who's speaking in the podcast. Rather than going through and adding it multiple times to each track, I can create what is called a bus track, which combines multiple tracks into one track. I'll show you how to do that, and then when I've created the bus track, I'll show you how to add effects to that bus track in Adobe Audition. First of all, I right-click on a track here, go to the track menu again, and I want to add a stereo bus track. And as you'll see, it appears there as bus A. Now I need to send all of those separate tracks with my guests on to that one track at the bottom here on the multi-track. Now in order to route all of those audio tracks onto the bus, you need to click these arrows, the right and left arrows here, inputs and outputs, and simply go through. And when you select the left pointing arrow, the output arrow, you want to check the bus to bus A, which is the bus you've just created. I'll just go through and do that on each track. And now when I go back to the beginning and play back, you'll see that everything is coming out of bus A. Podcast episode one. This is the intro to the podcast. This really is not my cup of tea. Hello, chap. Lovely day for it. Oh, put a sock in it. So you can see that the audio was flashing there on bus A and, of course, on the master output as well. Uh, you can also go into the mix of you and watch it happening in the mix. Podcast episode one. This is the intro to the podcast. This so if I go back in now and I'd like to apply an effect to all of those voices, I click into the effects tab there. And instead of going through each track individually, I can now simply go down to the effects rack on bus A. I can do it either there or here on my effects rack. And I can add maybe, for instance, my processing there, which is Dynamics Processing, Graphic Equalizer and Studio Reverb. Let's have a listen to that now. Maybe take the Studio Reverb off. Take the output down a little bit and play it back. This is the intro to the podcast. This really is not my cup of tea. Hello, chap. Lovely day for it. Oh, put a sock in it. And now you can see all guests in the podcast that I've created have been combined onto one track and I can alter them right there. Coming up in just a moment, we'll do session six where we'll look at pro podcast audio production techniques.